Hello folks, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Minecraft Resident Rise. I'm your host, Karen Dave, creator of the Resident Rise mod pack and one of the co-maintainers. Um, I have a special episode here today. We got a lot to do and uh, uh, a couple fun things, but um, I'm actually been joined by, ah, I found you. This is Mega. Hi, Mega. Hi, Mega. Hi. And you're a maintainer of one of the mods that we use in this mod pack, right? Yep. That's awesome. So which mod is yours? Uh, it's Extra Cells. It's an expansion to Applied Logistics. Oh yeah, so that's the one that gives fluid support, it gives all these extra buses. It also has a walrus? Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you tell me what's up with the walrus? Um, it's oh, an look. insider in the AE IRC channel. It's kind of algorithm X2 loves walruses. Interesting. So is it, can you craft a walrus? Is he craftable? Yeah, I think with fish. Interesting. I may have to make a... Uh, I have to ma may have to make one. Um, but what I was going to do first was, um, you had never seen the uh, Ritual of Binding, is what I heard, which is the thing from Blood Magic that makes specialized tools. Yes. Uh, I thought that maybe I could show you that, and then you had something that you thought you could help me with. So why don't we why don't we do mine first, since mine is more ridiculous, and then you can help me with the actual work with your actually awesome mod. Sound good? Yes. All right, so let's... Uh, you're like, uh, I think so. Uh, <laughs> let's um, let's head upstairs, and uh, he wants glass powder. If he doesn't get that, he can just grind it himself. Yeah, he he doesn't have the machines. I think it's easy. All right, so uh, head on up to where we were, and um, I will walk us over to the ritual ground. this this is the this is the sigil of the phantom bridge stay close because it despawns away from me so i'll just walk kind of slow right there we go so this is my binding ritual ground it's i've actually had a whole bunch of different things i've played with here as you can see over here like i was playing with teleposers but um yeah so what i'm gonna do is recommend that you stay back over here by the blue block because uh, what I'm going to do is I have one more uh, bound tool to make, and that is the uh, the shovel. So I fell down. Oh no! Um, yeah, there you go. I just keep it so monsters can't walk up here. Okay, uh, just be warned. I I can't. I am a mighty blood mage, but you may not be. So let's see here. So first, I tap it with my ritual circle, and then I toss. Oh, ow! ow. <laughs> I toss the shovel. And now we wait for the binding ritual. There we go. It's a little bit spectacular. This one looks like from Equivalent Exchange 2. Yes. Texture. Yes, although it's a little bit stronger than the tools from Equivalent Exchange 2, believe it or not. Um, have you seen the beast mode on these tools yet? Nope. Oh, man. Why don't you come here for a second? I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's just... Um, you can kind of just fall down here this way. So it's a, it's a nice tool, and it's uh, it's pretty fast, right? But uh, it has a couple special features. Uh, you know what? This is this is probably fine over here. So I'm gonna dig down a little bit, and I'm gonna kind of go underneath. So for the so there's this power source called LP, which you can make. You're up there. Um, for and and you start out with only five thousand. Uh, I have a million that I can max out at, and you have to make it by taking the life of something. Um, you can take it from yourself, like that's what my altar up there is specialized for. This shovel, if I right click it, it, turn, it unleashes the beast mode. Boop! It digs all that at once. And it's a shovel. Yeah, it's a super shovel. Um, it costs life just to stay on, so if you run out of LP, it will promptly kill you. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, I've been meaning to make one of those, and um, I actually, this is something folks may not have seen from the last episode, but I actually uh, just randomly tossed in my bound pickaxe and my bound sword and got looting 2, sharpness 4 on the sword. Um, and for the pickaxe, I actually did something different. That's pretty good, pretty good stuff. Um, and I actually did that with my experience farm downstairs, the metal experience farm. I set it up between episodes, 
Um, it uses a slightly different uh, system than most people. Oh, God, I'm so fast with the, the haste buff. I can't move. Uh, I, I kind of set it up down here. So this is, um, we're not going to talk too much about this yet, but there's a mechanism system and a tesseract there. We'll talk about why later. But uh, hiding in here is pretty much just a version of what I showed in my last episode with the experience farm. Uh, there's metals in here. There's all sorts of things. It turns out that this doesn't work too well automatically. So instead what I did was I sort of wait, just idled in here until I had many levels and then I would stand, I would just stand on that grate. Um, and then I used this auto enchanter, which was configured to take books from here and put them in the file cabinet. This open, open blocks auto enchanter is really cool, by the way. Um, and uh, what a lot of, right now it's set for big enchants because I'm trying to farm really, really awesome enchants. Like you can see we have a focus punch uh, and you, but you can see some of the older ones too. Uh, power four is a pretty nice one. But what a lot of people don't realize about enchanting is that once things are, if you could put something in an anvil, then you can take lots of lower level enchants and combine them together. And it actually costs less XP overall to do it that way. So I had set this down to like level 16 and farmed up several copies of uh, Fortune 1, Fortune 2, uh, Efficiency. I only got one big efficiency book, uh, two efficiency three books actually, and I managed to put those together. So that was the way that I enchanted those tools. Uh, let me go ahead and put this bound axe away. So I have this other room over here. Um, I have all these various systems and they all want power now. And I realized that I've been sucking the nether dry and that's kind of a bad thing to do. Um, also, it is just sort of a pain, right? It involves a lot of resources I'd love to use elsewhere. So I made this room and I was saying I would love to get to a position where I have lava, um, but the, not from the nether. And so that way I could, and I, I could store it someplace useful. And then Mega came in and said, well, maybe I could help you with that. So could you explain? <laughs> You're fixing up the walls. Yeah, I know, it's a little messy. Um, <laughs> could you explain what, uh, so I'm gonna make a, um, a little spot here where lava comes out. Could you explain what your suggestion is? So um, I've got a block in my mod, which is called the fluid transition plane. It does exactly like the original one does, but for fluids. So you have um, a block which basically sucks in fluids into the me network. Oh yeah. So um, it can like it can it can takes a, a block that appears and take it out of the world. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Um, and it, 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 so it has all the nice properties of a of a and a regular ME system too. It like it just it su sucks everything right into your ME world and all those things. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna start by making a really simple ritual. I have so much dirt on me now. <laughs> that stupid shovel. <laughs> um, uh, a really simple ritual here. Uh, there we go. Uh, toss this in. I need another four of those pull this out. So what, what I'm going to make first is our lava factory. Now, um, this is another one of those fun things uh, that people, let's see, we need a master ritual stone. There's our ritual stone. It's a pretty simple ritual. It's one of the earliest ones that you can, well, no, I lost my orb again. Why? Well, I need to get better at that. Derp. All right. So let's go ahead, head down here with some bricks. Uh, just those will do. Eight is fine. Well, you know what? No, let's take the fancy brick. Go for broke. Uh, yeah, so here's my plan. Let me show you, I can make lava. Um, it's pretty easy. So let's just put this, I guess, right, um, how about right here? So I put down my ritual, my master ritual stone in the center, like so. And then I put down my ritual stones on all four sides. And then I'm going to put down, uh, well, first I need to um, get my elemental inscription tool of fire, which I made another one of because there's nothing I'm working on. So now this is ready to go. This is a lot like one of the things you saw out, outside, um, but a little bit easier, uh, a little bit less dangerous to work with. So let me just um, brick this off so that it doesn't spill lava everywhere. Will this stuff stay there, down there? Yeah. No problem. So we, so we will have the plane up here. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. So let's just, uh, let me pull out my weak activation crystal and tap this just like I would any of the other blood magic rituals. And we have a serenade of the nether. There we go. And now if that goes away, then it, the, the, the ritual will attempt to respawn it. And it's this is like the most efficient way to make lava with LP. There's another sigil that makes it. You can like have a, ripe, a player tap it, but it costs a lot more. So this is like super efficient. Yeah, Ray of Time told me it's um, double as expensive yeah. with the sigil. All right, so why don't you go and grab the stuff? 
I'm gonna see if I can kind of dig around back here and run some ME cable in. I think we should have some okay. stuff to make the cable. So let me just hop, because I know where the cable drops are back here. And should I already hook up the terminal? Uh, oh, wait, 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 what is a terminal? I didn't even realize. Show, show me the terminal. Oh, yeah, that's right, we're gonna be, you, I don't even know. Oh, whoa, whoa, what is this? I haven't even, oh, whoa, so I haven't even seen this before. So I can toss buckets in here and take buckets out and click, oh, that's so cool. I can even search them? Uh, if you put this storage thing here into the drive, Okay, I have to. I have to have a storage. I remember looking at this recipe and thinking it was expensive, but probably it's not that bad now. It just anytime I see a flux crystal, I shut down in my mind. Uh, <laughs> okay, so like I could, for example, I could take all the creosote oil out of these things and toss that in there. Yes, basically. That would be no. That's 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 awesome. So how much can uh, you gave me a cell? Uh, One thousand twenty-four bytes, five fluid types. So. Um. How many how many buckets is that? Um, one bucket is four bytes, so this one will hold two hundred fifty six. Wow, bytes. that's pretty good. Is that is this the most basic? Yeah, it's the most basic cell. Yeah, that's the most basic one. So that it starts as dense as the open blocks tanks or the uh, the uh, extra utilities tanks, two fifty six buckets, and then only gets does it get four times more each time? Um, it's four times more, I think. Oh wow. All right, um, let me uh, go ahead and go ahead and do that digging while you get set up here, and I'll come in and see what you've done. Because this is this is this is awesome. I can't I, I can't believe I wasn't doing this before. It seems like such a no brainer. Okay, a little technical difficulty there. Uh, so we ran the drop over the side, and uh, whoa, look at this, look at this. So now there is this is this is the import bus according to my fluid transition plane. Yeah. So any any time that there is a uh, Anytime that there is fluid there, it's sucking it away. So I should check on my, um, I'm a little concerned about my LP. Because uh, I imagine we're probably going to fill up that cell, like, basically instantly. And hopefully it won't, like, if you see me just die randomly, it's because my uh, my LP network couldn't hold up under the strain. I should be able to. Uh, but I may not. Let's see. How are we doing? Whoa, we're using quite a bit. <laughs> okay, that's quite a bit. Uh, I've used over 100,000. Over 100,000. Oh, We have 56 uh, millibuckets, uh, 56,000 millibuckets at the moment. Wow, so we're just completely... That is... That, oh, man, this interface is really hot. This is cool, man. <laughs> like, that's a, that's, that, that's a really, really elegant way to display it. I'm just going to toss these fuels in. To, uh, ex we'll talk about why the experience farm has changed. Um, if you want to manage that stuff, you can take a blue cable, which... Um dissolves it from the network and uh, level emitter so you can control how much is in it. Oh, that, oh yeah, that'd be perfect, right? Like a dark cable. I could even hook that up. I can actually have redstone understand how much LP I have. So I could do it that way too. Okay, well this is cool. Man, I am using so much... That's uh, <laughs> another... That's wow. That's wow. This is cool though. It's really effective. I've never... I've ne I didn't realize how awesome this would be. Okay, so we're going to fill up until we eventually get 256,000. Uh, that or twenty six thousand mill buckets. That's that's cool. So um, the reason that I wanted to make these was because I want us to start. Like I have these three little engines over here. These little Invar engines running off lava on the Nether. What I'd really like to do is actually have them set up with um, uh, with lava from this system. So we're gonna we're gonna rig up some engines, and I'll show you why in just a sec uh, after we gather the materials, folks. I'll be right back. All right, we're back and we have everything we need, but uh, I come back down and uh, Mega's just hard at work here. So what what did you change here? Um, I added this dark cable. Uh, it's a cable which connects if it is being powered by redstone. Yeah. yeah. Um, not visually, but uh, yeah. And this fluid level emitter is oh. at the moment not emitting anything because we have more than 100 buckets of lava. But if we, if we go under it, it will switch on and the uh, transition plane will start working again. So for example, if I added uh, another thousand millibuckets to the number, then it would turn back on. Oh, it took another bucket and then it went away. I saw it pulse. Cool. Cool. Um, I was thinking uh, that maybe it would be cooler if we could see the lava in this little rig. 
Um, I mean, this is not the prettiest room that we have, but I, I grabbed some uh, swirling glass from Extra Utilities, and I'll just... Um, there we go. That's pretty cool. That's definitely way cool. <laughs> I like that stuff. There's so many awesome uh, blocks in... Oh, shoot. I closed that wall. There's so many awesome blocks in uh, Extra Utilities now. This swirling glass is just one of them. That looks, that looks super high-tech, doesn't it? It's like a weird, uh, magical... Oh, wow, look at it. Look at it go. I wonder yeah, what it's doing. Yeah, uh, bus. Oh, yeah. No, it's on again. Grid stop. That's cool. Yeah, this, this, uh, these two are really, really efficient mods, so when they talk to each other, it's, it's hard to even see. Um, well, so I wanted to talk about, then, what this is all for. Um, uh, this is... Uh, a bunch of lava, and um, we're not going to move too much of it very far, so it's, it's going to seem a little silly. But we're also going to be using this um, to power a bunch of other stuff and have a public lava channel and move lava elsewhere. One of the things I wanted to do was come in here, and um, I'm going to be starting a new base soon in a different area. And I need to be able to move back and forth. Now, I could use my Darkcraft Force Rods, um, and that's a thing that we could do, and that would work. But what I think I'd rather do is just have a nice gateway. Um, there's a cool uh, mod called, uh, I think it's Extended Portals 3, uh, or Extra Portals, uh, let me see, it's, yeah, uh, Enhanced Portals, Enhanced, Enhanced Portals 3, and it, it um, has these really cool blocks called Dimensional Stabilizers, which are the heart of any given portal network, there we go, and I've actually made a bunch of these, um, yeah, let's go like this, and you know what, silly me, I need a special wrench to talk to them, but, um, this, this block needs a whole bunch of power to function because it turns out that opening a wormhole between different points in the same world or different dimensions is actually a little bit expensive. So, um, let's see, we look for the wrench that we need. It's a specialized wrench. There we are, from Enhanced Portals, which is just a piece of nether quartz and iron. So now if I grab this special wrench, boy, I'm glad that I have another wrench. Hop, hop right over. Too many wrenches. <laughs> I like how they call it the Crested Hammer. In, in the other thing. Okay, so if I tap this, uh, there we go. So now, as you can see, um, I have got a dimensional bridge stabilizer. Here, you wanna check it out? I'll, I'll toss it over to you. You can pick up that wrench, right click it with the wrench and you'll see. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's got its own custom thing. You can see it stores a fair amount of redstone flux. Um, so what I've gotta do is, uh, we've got to get power into that. Now, what I'm thinking, is that maybe we could use this lava that I'm generating so cheaply to power this uh, system. So why don't we run some, um, let's see, we could put them, um, it's getting a little cramped in here. Why don't we put them, you you made some uh, Invar, the lava powered thermal expansion engines, right? Magmatic dynamos. Magmatic dynamos. Uh, how much, how many of those do you have? Uh, nine. Okay, so all we need to do just make a little bit of room right here, like maybe a, or well, actually, you know what? Let's 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 minimize the cable cost. Let's put them right here, and then I'll I'll close up the wall in a sec. Yeah, and we'll um, why don't we put them like run them back around here, and then right in the middle here, we'll put the places where we run the power to. So I actually have made a tesseract just for this. And I also happen to have a um, hardened energy cell that we can use as well. And I'm going to set this up so that the bottom side of this does not communicate at all with the outside world. There we go. Yeah, it's set up so that the bottom side of it is it's not input, it's not output, it's just gold. So now these two things don't talk. And we're going to run cables into both. And I'll have a public power channel running off uh, my blood lava here. And then we'll have this cell here. Um, it will run into the dimensional stabilizer and power it. So we need to get lava out of the ME system now and into this, right? Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay, so how do we do that? What's the right way? What's the block? Um, I have an ME fluid export bus in my hand here. Oh, sweet. Uh, behind you. <laughs> oh, I'll grab it. So this is this is just like the um, the regular fluid bus that we see. So let's go ahead and we'll just run the cable. Um, do you have cable? Are we out of cable? Uh, do you have cable? Enough? I don't have any on me. No, you then had to get some. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, I'll just I'll break the um, break the thing here, and we just need to run that around and up here. I think. Yeah, there we go. 
So now, can we export? We have to export into some kind of tank, or can we export directly into like Liquidux? We can export directly. It won't connect physically, uh, visually, but uh, it will export. Why don't we run the Why don't we run the Liquidux out from there, where underneath where I put that? But that's really cool. We can just go right into other pipes. So would you run the cable around the back there, and I'll break this light, and I'll remake okay. it. I'll connect it behind the dark cable, so we... Oh, um, perfect. Yeah. I can't click anything, stupid export bus. <laughs> so you're using uh, the... Uh, and, uh, was it the... You're using not, not using fluid ducts, you're using um, fluid conduits from Ender.io. That's cool. I had a bunch of those yeah. lying around. I'd just been playing with the thermal expansion because it was shiny and new. That's why I took them. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get a lava bucket quickly so we can format the export bus. So we need to have a bucket of lava. And that's yeah. how we do it. And you're using that sweet fluid export bus upstairs. Oh, look, you even colored it. Oh, wow, it's red now to signify the lava. Whew. Whoa. It is. My frame rate's a little shallow right now. It's not so good. I'm not sure what's up. Let me see here. Let's go video settings. Fast. Okay, so oh, that's much work. better. Alright, so let's see this. How do you connect them? Oh, you just tap them with a wrench. Oh, wow, it really does work, huh? That's awesome. That's perfect that you don't have to have, like, an intermediate thing. That's really awesome. So why don't we actually put them... They don't need redstone signals, so why don't we put them vertically, centered right here? So instead... Uh, yeah, let's... Because uh, it'll be, I think, a little bit easier if we go no, like we this. Have two left. Uh, that's fine. Uh, oh, this this wrench unfortunately doesn't uh, doesn't play the game. Let me just grab a real wrench. So hold up, hold up your horses here. Hold up your horses here, because I think what we can do is make this more compact and make more room for expansion later. Unlike yeah. unlike regular um, what you'd see with like uh, the buildcraft engines, we don't actually have to do it this way because oh, and a wrench takes these out. By the way, it's so cool. Uh, whoa, I... Whoa. I didn't mean to break that. Somehow I did, though. Huh. With a wrench. Ah, it was a wrench. Yeah, it, it's wrenchable. Oh, interesting. So, I, if I right... How do I make it... Uh, how do I make it point the right direction? Um, just, um... If you have the wrench, go... Uh, click on the face. It's uh, So it's facing down. Do I right-click? Because um, that, that broke it. Uh, right click on the face where you want it to face so if you want it to face down you oh i see that's an interesting face. oh that's really cool actually that's that's way more convenient because i'm so used to being abused and having to like you know run it multiple times uh this, this is this is better so let me see if i can get underneath it and shift right clicking puts it into the other direction there we go yeah. all right so instead of doing it this way let's do it like this how do i ah uh, yes right i have to i have to murder on these to pot to break them so let's moment. put let's put them vertically. Let me show you what I mean. Because these guys don't need a redstone signal. Even if they did, we could use Ender I/O to stack the redstone signal. Here, uh, yeah, let me just get a reference. So let's put them vertically, like so. Do you have the rest of the conduits there? Um, I would assume you have yeah, enough. All gone. Um, well, I can make more. Doesn't seem so. <laughs> wow. Um, the export bus is at twenty millibuckets per tick. That's enough, I think. Oh, that should be yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, and let me. What you want to go grab some more of those conduits while I. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's so cool. We're using nether lava. Is there a better uh, fluid export bus? Like, let's say you needed like like hundreds of mill buckets to tick. Um, this thing is um, itself can be upgraded in it, so the GUI has a config option. Uh, it's this little button under the redstone. Top. Oh, okay, wow. So if, if, if the cost goes up if I move more. Oh, wow. Wow. Even goes you can use a bucket a tick? There. That's yeah. crazy. Uh, the question is if the respective fluid conduit will hold that. <laughs> yeah. 
um, but I think it's even cheaper because uh, 20 millibuckets per tick cost 5 power units per tick. Yeah. And um, 1000 millibuckets cost 60, so it's um, cheaper at the end. But um, for the moment, it's exp it's more expensive. Would will you orient them to look yeah. to us? You said you had two more. Could you put one more on the edge here? And yes, I will orient them. Oh wow, we have nine. That's perfect. I should run my yeah. entire power system out of here because my power system is right above us. I'll definitely do that. <laughs> Do we have any more of that stuff? Yeah, and then run one into the Tesseract and one to the Hardened Energy. Can you stop them from connecting to each other? Um, it doesn't. That's fine for them to connect to each other. They don't. The the the, the Tesseract uh, won't talk to the other thing. I have to go like this. I think there we go. Ah. Oh. Yeah, there's they're set up. Yeah, I'll have to fix it in just a sec. But they're set up to. Um, to not talk to each other, so the Tesseract won't feed back in. And there we go. So now we, now we should be making a fair amount of power, actually. Um, I'm surprised. Yeah, they are all outputting 40 per tick, so. Yeah, I wonder where, I wonder where this is all going, because I don't see it coming into the, um, oh wait, I have to turn. So that guy has to be blue. So that's, um, yeah, and now he should be filling up pretty yeah. fast. Oh yes. yeah, wow, look at that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Right? And then do you have do you have just uh two more of those conduits? Or are we out? There we go. And boom. Uh, and that left. now he should start to go down pretty fast because this this thing oh, will start to eat the power pretty quickly. Go like this. Actually doing nothing. I think it's just holding the value. Interesting. I wonder, well, this, this thing is now, I wonder if I just have to, I wonder if this is messed up on this side. Okay, so I want this guy to be, it's out. And this guy is not responsive, so. Huh. There we go. Oh, I may have to put it, wait. Oh, it's only holding 20,000 RF. I wonder if I built it wrong. Because it seems to be a bit confused now. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's working right. It's working right. Yeah, now we're building up an excess over here. I may need to build another one of these. I don't know. We'll have to see. But, uh... Yeah, this is awesome. Look at this. Uh, I should actually run this power line. I may run this up into uh, off-camera. I'll build some more of those conduits and run this up. I have a, a an energy cube up here, and then even up there, I can see I have a energy cell. I may swap these things. Because this, this guy can output 400 RF a tick, which is more than enough, whereas this guy can output 2,000, so really substantially better. Um, right, so the next thing to do is to actually use this to um, travel somewhere. Let me go ahead and collect the blocks that we need and um, we'll go about doing that. So just one sec, folks, and I'll grab the uh, next things and craft a few things that we're missing. And uh, Mega Freak, I think you may be stuck. <laughs> you may, you may, we may need a staircase down there. I'm just saying. There you, oh, uh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back, folks. Okay, folks, so um, now we've got this sweet power system. Uh, let's go ahead and use it. Um, so what we need to do is start making some portals. And we're going to make a portal to a pretty fun place, which is where I'm going to start building my new base. Uh, before that, though, I need to make a few of these portal cards. I've already done one as a little bit of a test, but if you tap the, your dimensional stabilizer with a wrench, then you can go ahead and toss in these cards and make the location cards. I've already got one set up. Uh, well, no. Let's just toss that in. Should be able to stack now if they're identical. Maybe not. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, we just need to go out and make a portal. I should tell them I'm recording. Oh, in case you didn't know, Way of Flowing Time is here. And he got in Horizons, the FDB pack. He, I guess, didn't know. That's funny. Huh. Let's just uh, turn that sound a bit lower. It's the, one of those really torrential downpours. All right. So um, what we need to do is go ahead and make a portal. 
this is pretty straightforward for what our purposes are. We're just, they're used to, I was trying to work with the Rs portals and they didn't quite do what I wanted to do. So we're just gonna grab that dirt and be useful later and make a small portal here. So we just lay out these portal frames, which um, the recipe is not too involved, a uh, block of pillar quartz. Uh, the network portal controllers are, well, no, that's not what we wanted. Portal controllers are substantially, well, it's still moving it around. Come on, come on, inventory tweak, stop messing with me. Well, I'll show you the recipe in a sec. Let me just finish this, because inventory tweaks has decided to be my enemy, my nemesis. Um, so we just go ahead and we don't even have to do that, uh, but we will for the look of it. Um, and now we need a dialing device. Uh, this is the more fancy of the two types of things, um, and I'll probably rebuild this later to be a, a little bit nicer still. Well, that's a portal controller. Uh, we need a, a portal controller and a dialing device. The dialing device we touch all the time, so it makes more sense for it to be at... Uh, at, at uh, I guess, arm's height, mouse natural mouse height. Okay, um, now once we've got the frame made, we just right click the uh, controller and it says it was initialized successfully. Tapping it with a wrench means we can basically give it a universal identifier. Let's make this one fireworks, 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 right? Um, now, this means that we have a, uh, a uh, por uh, portal here that goes pretty much anywhere we want, but there's no other portals in the network. We do have one more set location card. Uh, well, no, it looks like it was actually used up. So let's go ahead and set that really quick. And um, what I'm gonna do is take you, I went out roaming and um, there's a couple other people who are starting up on the server and I wanted to play with them in a different area. And you know, I wanna work on my sky base now that we're really somewhere. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna head over there. So now we got this location set. Now, if I pull out my dark craft bag, and show you, I have several ender rods. First one goes to home, uh, and this one goes to the potential witching site too. Uh, don't ask me why it's called that. But if I just uh, hit five, here I am at potential witching site. Uh, this is two, so let's go, to, let's go to the next witching site. This beautiful redwood forest, I think would be a wonderful place for me to build my technomagical grove. Uh, all going to be floating in midair, all going to be cool. But um, we need to make an easy way over there that doesn't involve liquid force. So. Let's go ahead and um, let's make the portal. Um, let's go ahead and just make it right here for now. Two, three. Uh, I guess we pull off two of these to make rooms for our dialing device and whatnot. Uh, like so, we need a portal controller and a uh, dialing device. And now if we right click this portal controller, there we go, portal was initialized successfully. And um, then we have to set an identifier for it. So the last one was firework, fireworks, fireworks. So let's make this, um, I don't know, um, nether star, nether star, nether star, right? So there we go. And now if we go to this dialer and we ask it to go to fireworks, 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 and dial, ta-da, it comes online. We hop through and we're back home. How cool is that? Uh, now, uh, we should set it up to, we should terminate it after walking through. It's possible to automate that, but um, right now it would, it would make sense. Identifier cannot be blank. So let's go to nether star, nether star, nether star. Let's uh, go ahead and add that and call that new magical kingdom. All right. Um, and let's go ahead and you know what? For fun, let's just up this a little bit. And by the way, sorry that I'm on simple graphics with a short view distance. I, <laughs> looks like Mega's been messing with me. He made everything lime. Well, that means I'm gonna have to have an awful lot of stuff. Uh, let's grab a bucket. Just one will do. And let's make, uh, let's make our portal look cool. I think that this is easy enough to do. I think we just toss this in here. It'll fill up really fast. Well, reasonably fast. There we go. All right, and I think if we go like this and go to the painter interface, I think we can do all sorts of cool stuff here. Like for example, we can make a custom portal. I think if we put a bucket in here, then that becomes the facade. So let's go ahead and make that. And then for the particles, let's have those little swirlies come out and let's make them red like Waze, Waze uh, particles. Right, so that should be good. If we save that, 
then that's the new Magical Kingdom. So if we dial that by double clicking and hitting dial, oh, look at that. It looks like blood magic. Even on the other side, it does. That is so cool. All right, and so on this side, we add firework, 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 uh, and we'll call this base alpha. Uh, and we won't change the color on this. This will be fine, because base alpha is kind of a generic magical place. Now we can just tap through, double tap, dial, hop through, and we come through, and that's what the portal looks like on this side. So we can, of course, terminate. Yeah, so now we're using that power. That's so cool. Oh, gosh. Gosh, that's cool. I can't wait to use that more. Folks, I just want to take a minute to uh, really thank Mega. He came up, and he was talking to me, and um, I asked him about something, and he gave us a fix to a really serious problem we'd been having. Uh, you wrote this mod, RR Utils, right? Yeah. And um, it's, a, it's a recipe control mod that's really, really helpful for server owners. Um, so it does a couple things. It removes recipes in a really targeted way, and it's up to date. But it also has this in-game command to help you use it. So, so I can see the the proper name of an item with it. How do how does that work? Yeah, um, you hold the item in your hand, and okay. then you use slash uh, uln for unlocalized name. Uln. Uh, either caps lock or down lowercase. Okay, cool. Wow. And so that tells me it's item thermal expansion tool wrench. And I can use that and you can we can in a targeted fashion remove recipes really straightforwardly, right? Yeah, in the config I have two options. The the first one is to remove um items which have a certain char sequence in their name. Mm -hmm. And the other one is just the same but if it it's equal to not if it contains it. Oh, so you can even you can even remove whole slit things that match a substring. Yeah. So we used that to remove, there were, um, in particular, here's an example, uh, the Atomic Science steel plate. Um, we had recipe conflicts that are actually really hard to get rid of because lots of recipe remover mods don't do the right thing when there's multiple conflicting recipes. It's like, for example, the steel plate used four steel ingots, but it, so did, but Metallurgy's steel bricks, they also used that recipe. The other recipe removers we tried just removed the entire recipe set and just got rid of it all. and You couldn't craft anything, which is even worse. But uh, what Mega's mod does, and this is something that anyone who makes a custom mod pack could use. So it says our utils and we thank him, but it's really for everybody. Um, you can use that to fix up recipe conflicts and get rid of things you don't want. Uh, so it, it solves a whole bunch of problems because no, when you have like 160, 170 mods in a mod pack, Recipe conflicts will happen, and you probably won't even know until you need something. Like, I didn't even, I use Steve Carts all the time. I didn't know that the wheel recipe was busted. It conflicted with something else, and we fixed that too. So, really, 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 really heartfelt thanks from the Resident Rise team to you, Mega, because that, you saved us from, like, it's one of the biggest, uh, the biggest set of bugs that we were going to before we go final was that, because it was just, we, di we didn't have a good way to solve it, and you saved the day for us. Thank you so much. Thanks. And I hope everybody else uses it, too, because everybody else should use that mod. It's super useful. All right, folks. Well, I think that we're running a little bit long, but before I go, I really wanted to just take another moment to thank Mega Freak for everything that he's done this episode. Thank you so much, dude. Uh, it was fun. <laughs> I'm glad that you had fun because uh, what I have is way more awesome than what I was planning. And now I have, um, I was like, I had this fear in my head that extra cells was expensive, but I see it's not now. It's perfect. And it's way cooler than just having a tank. Now I have like digital liquid. <laughs> and uh, folks, if you like this, um, you should go and check out Mega Freak's mod, his thread. Check out, uh, he has an open source mod like we talked about, the uh, RR Utils. That's open source. So if you're curious about how he did it, you can check it out. That's awesome. Um, and if you like this video, please leave a like, a subscribe. I don't, look, you could just comment, man. I, I'm happy to even take your dislikes. To that one person in Canada who has disliked 90% of my videos, I love you, man. Where did you go? I miss your dislikes. You're like way more engaged than most of the people who like my videos. Uh, thanks for watching, folks, and I hope to see you again next time when we continue and we'll um, start setting up the new base and start using this new power for even more evil things. Bye. See you.